Denny Hamlin had some comments about Corey LaJoy. Does Austin Dillon have a chance of winning his appeal on Wednesday? Plus, Lee Diffie is in the NASCAR booth starting this weekend at Daytona. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. When things are going bad, they're going bad. And things are going bad right now for Corey LaJoy. He, of course, got fired from his ride. He slipped over twice this year, and he still does not have a top 10 on a non-drafting track. Plus, he now has Denny Hamlin saying that he's just out of control, man. So if you missed what happened on Monday, Corey LaJoy made slight contact with the 10 car of Noah Gragson. Whether it was intentional or not, did the air get him? Doesn't matter. He turns sideways down the backstretch and immediately flipped over. He ends up on his roof, slides down to the grass where it finally catches him flips him back over. That's why NASCAR wants to pave over all the backstretch areas like at Daytona and get rid of the grass because as soon as that car hit grass, it had a violent flip back to its wheels where if it was on concrete, it just kept sliding upside down. Eh, then he would have been stuck upside down for a while. And we've seen how long it can take safety crews to flip those cars back over at times. But for LaJoy, he ends up on his roof. He's sliding. Well, Denny Hamlin was behind him as that accident was happening because, of course, he crashed on Sunday uh, before the race was postponed uh, until Monday. Hamlin's driving along, and out of the left side of the car here, you see the seven just take flight, lay him back on his roof, and slide. And as Denny's coming around to the front stretch there, he said, Corey LaJoy's just out of control, man. His own worst enemy. He says something in between there where, like, it's kind of inaudible. I can't actually tell what he says, but he says, Corey LaJoy's just out of control, man. He's his own worst enemy. Long pause, and then Gabe Hart keys up the mic and goes, copy? <laughs> you can watch it right here. Corey LaJoy is out of control, man. Fuck me, he's the worst enemy. Copy. For LaJoy, though, it is, he is out of control in a sense. Not like Amanda Bynes out of control, Britney Spears shaving her head type of thing. Uh, not even T.O. when he was doing sit-ups in his front yard back when he was playing for the Eagles and doing live hits on ESPN from the driveway. Very bizarre. He's just out of control in the sense that I think he's just trying too hard right now. Uh, he's He just needs to, in a sense, take a step back. There's a lot of heat on him, a lot of focus on him. The internet's constantly coming down on Corey LaJoy. Oh, he's stacking pennies, he's going to be stacking burgers next year. Not, probably not. He might be stacking trucks, but he's not going to be stacking burgers. So for LaJoy, it just feels like I'm sure a lot at once, and he's just not performing. He has his two rookie teammates, both pick up top tens yesterday on non-drafting tracks. Uh, not a great look for LaJoy as he continues to try to get his first one in the Cup Series. They are headed to Daytona this upcoming weekend. He does excel at drafting tracks, so maybe he could be in play there for a good run, potentially even contend for a win if he doesn't end up on his roof again. But when you have guys like Denny Hamlin even, you know, acknowledging the fact that he's just out of control, just trying too hard, just trying to do too much. And he had a really good run going. He had an opportunity 100% to get that top 10 yesterday, finally get the monkey off his back and just doesn't get it done. So for LaJoy, I think a change of scenery next year is definitely going to help him. I think moving down to a lower series is definitely going to help him. Big fish in a small pond type of situation. He's got all this cup experience. He has a ton of racecraft experience. Now he can go down and sharpen his skills, right? Get better, hone him. Hone his skills is probably the word I was looking for there. <laughs> and get better and then come back up. But for now, he is slightly just like Denny said, out of control. And he is his own worst enemy. He just needs to get out of his own way you know, every now and then. Um, I still think Corey can drive. I just do less at times. Less is more sometimes. So for LaJoy, just don't end up on your roof this weekend, and that would be a success. Has any driver flipped over three times in one NASCAR Cup Series season? LaJoy's the first guy to flip over twice since 1993 when Rusty did it. I need to look up the stats for three now. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com. Find out a pair for you. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have the classic frames on right now. Really partial to these. Uh, I wear them. SVG wears them. Josh Berry wears them. Ryan Priest. Drivensunglasses.com. Code break hard at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Moving on to the biggest topic that will happen on Wednesday. That will be the appeal. RCR will appeal their penalty of Austin Dillon that NASCAR handed down following the Richmond race. Of course, NASCAR stripped Austin Dillon of his playoff eligibility, gave him a 25-point driver and owner fine, allowed him to keep the win from Richmond, and now RCR will appeal this penalty. A lot of people are asking, does RCR have a chance of winning this appeal? No, this is just not something that they are going to to win. Could they? Sure, they absolutely could. The Oakland Athletics could win the World Series. Will they? No. I went to the White Sox there, but they've officially been eliminated, finally. Put them out of their misery. But 
for Austin, sure, they have a shot of winning. I would say they have a 5% shot. 95% chance NASCAR is going to uphold this penalty, or the panel will. 5% chance that Austin Dillon and team, you know, get this overturned. Of course, they are going to go in and hit NASCAR with the same things a lot of people have been asking. What rule did we break? Show us a precedent for this. Has this ever happened before? No, no, no. Rule that you broke is up to NASCAR's discretion. There's nothing that explicitly says, hey, if you wreck two cars coming to the finish line, that's going to be, you know, a a, a penalty worthy of stripping you for, of your playoff eligibility. So, so they're going to go in and hit them hard, right? It's going to be a lot like Austin said in his um, interview with NBC on Friday, I believe, at, after practice, he said it's going to be a lot like, or maybe a Saturday, who knows at this point, Saturday. He said that it's going to be a lot like a courtroom. And he's right, it is. They're going to go in, present their case, show all the evidence, give their testimony, essentially. And then they're going to have other people come in and probably provide, you know, um, context to what they're talking about. And then a panel will make that up. Who's the panel going to be? Hasn't been announced yet. If they get a former driver, like I think Jeff Gluck said on the teardown, maybe there's an opportunity for them to, you know, have that perspective from it. And that could help Austin out depending on who it is. But for the most part, this seems like something that is not going to overturn, especially after NASCAR revamped their penalty panel uh, last year, following what all the Hendrick and colleague penalties uh, that were overturned and things changed. Yeah, NASCAR handed this penalty down. I do not expect it to overturn, but it will certainly be the biggest talking point headed into uh, Thursday. And then this weekend at Daytona, fully expect Austin Dillon to still have to try to win at Daytona and, and Darlington. Do not expect him to have his uh, playoff eligibility reinstated. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But that will happen on Wednesday morning. Moving on to the last topic of the day. Lee Diffie will be joining the NASCAR Cup Series booth full-time starting this weekend at Daytona through the remainder of the season. Rick Allen's last race calling the Cup Series for NBC, at least for this year, the foreseeable future probably, was on Monday at Michigan. He will move down and be the lead voice of the Xfinity Series. Kevin Lee will become the lead voice of the IndyCar Series for the rest of the year. And for Lee Diffie, it's a massive get for him, right? He is under contract with NBC through 2025 expect him to be the voice of NASCAR next year as well. I know there's a lot of fans that are happy about this because people, uh, you know, maybe don't like Rick Allen. He did give us some great meme moments. Aggressive goes around. Run. Aggressive goes around. Problems, playoff implications, yelling at maybe unnecessary times, but he's a consummate professional. Rick Allen is one of the best in the business, and maybe he lost his way a little bit along the way. And I think one thing that hurts NASCAR broadcasters, is it's the same voice that we hear essentially for 18 straight weeks and then another 18 straight weeks. And that gets tiring after a while. You just certain things start to grate you and you're listening to them through practice and qualifying a race, sometimes the Xfinity series as well. And it's just like, this is just too much of one voice or one, you know, the multiple voices that we have in the booth between Burton, Latart and Allen that Lee Diffie is going to bring a new level of excitement, right? He's a consummate professional. He's very good at what he does. He was great on Supercross calls. He's incredible at the Indianapolis uh, 500. He's incredible calling the IndyCar series. Listen to this year, the final laps of this year's Indianapolis 500. Lee Diffie did an amazing job calling that. He called the track and field events at the Olympics earlier, just a couple of weeks ago, um, in Paris. Did a great job there. Did he mess up the 100 meters? Yes, he did. But he owned it up in the moment. And people make mistakes. I mean, everybody thought that Jamaica had won it. And then cocky Noah Lyles comes through and wins it by five one thousandths of a second. It happens. It just happens. Lee Diffie is really, really good. And I know there's a lot of fans out here that are like, we ain't watching, we ain't listening to Lee, L-E-E, -E, not L-E-I-G-H, because that's how Americans spell it, Lee. That's an exact quote from somebody in my TikTok comments. Um, yeah, he sounds different. He's Australian. He has an accent. He's going to say things like Daytoner and stuff like that. Roll with it. It's fine. It's not, you know, anything different than listening to a really heavy Southern accent, which is difficult to understand at times. Um, I know there's people that are going to be upset that they're getting rid of Southern voices. Rick Allen is not from the South. He's very much from the Northeast, but I think this is a good move for NBC, for NASCAR, and it should bring a new level of excitement to the booth. I wish Fox would try something um, like this, where they kind of move in a different lead announcer. Mike Joy is, was great. I think his time has maybe passed him up just a little bit, and it would be nice to see them try somebody else out in that role. 
not going to for 2025 based off of everything that seems to have been reported. But for NBC, I like the move. I like that they're taking a chance here. So let me know in the comments. What do you think about Denny Hamlin's comments, Austin Dillon's chances of uh, getting his penalty overturned, and Lee Diffie joining the NBC broadcast this weekend at Daytona? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.